Hi everyone and welcome back to the final quick tip of this year by Janus Engineering. This December we will take a closer look at how to create tools. First, I will show you how to add a tool, its parametric and the 3D data by default in X settings. And afterwards, I will show you the all new approach that we from Janus Engineering have created for our technology manager. So stick with, stick with me to see the revolutionary way in creating tools by using 3D data only. But first things first, Let's begin with the default settings that we have in mind for us today. Well, what do I have in front of me? I see the very tool that I would like to add into my tool database and I usually will begin in adding the tool holder only. So therefore I will hide the other bodies and now we see the tool holder only in front of us. So I'm switching my application to manufacturing Within the manufacturing, I now have the possibility to add, create a new tool. And down here in the tool subtype, I'm selecting the milling tool. Hit the OK bu uh, button. And now we see the dialog in creating a new tool. Usually, you know the uh, parametrics for the tool itself. For instance, the diameter instead of 30, it's going to be like 50 millimeters in this place. But as I already mentioned, I would like to begin with the tool holder. Therefore, I'm going to the holder tab up here. <clears throat> Usually, I have the possibility to add some parametrics up here. For instance, the lower diameter, the length and the upper diameter. Then we will see that the first step is being created. But this time, I would like to use the holder definition instead. So therefore, instead of specify, I will go to solid body specify mounting that's the upper place where the tool will go into the spindle up here and now i have to select the body and i will click the holder itself when i click on extract steps parameters now we will see that all the parametric got created automatically by itself only by selecting the body and defining the uh, mounting uh, point in here so that's actually it and what else? I also would like to add this tool holder to my library. So therefore, I will go down to library, give it a holder library reference, for instance, XMAS. And now I will hit the export holder to library icon in here. Now the tool holder itself got loaded into my tool database, or better said, holder database. Well, now as I have my um, tool holder created, it's time to take a closer look at the other components up here. As I mentioned, there are some components in here, for instance, all the inserts down here and also the shank or the second tool holder actually. But how can we work with that? I will go to tool and now I have the possibility to add the parametric of that very tool in here. For instance, the diameter. According to the vendor's dialog, the diameter is supposed to be 103 millimeters. I will simply add it and we see that the tool is already being changed. The next thing is the lower radius of 1.5 millimeters. That's also from the vendor, this information. And now we can take a closer look at the length, flute length, relief diameter and relief length. Let's begin with the flute length. The flute length is supposed to be the length of the flute actually. So what do we take for that? We will take the insert and measure its length. Its length. So therefore we have 15.91 uh, something millimeters. I will simply copy that value and paste it down here. There we go. So now the flute length got changed. The same goes for the length. What is the length supposed to be? When I change it by hand down to 35 for instance, we see what it's about to mean in here. So what do I type in for the length? For the length, I would take the length between the edge of the insert and this uh, edge of the tool holder itself. Now I see that the length is 41.5 something. I also will copy it once more and insert it in its position down here. So now we have the diameter, we have the length. What else is missing? The relief is missing. As you see, the 3D model 
is going inwards with its diameter. So therefore I have to add it as well in here. So let's take a closer look at the relief diameter. The relief diameter is supposed to be diameter of 99 millimeters. So therefore I will simply change it to 99. And we also have to take a closer look at the relief length. So what is the relief length in my case? It's from this edge up to this edge again. And we see that the relief length is 25.6 something. One more time, copy it, paste it. And now we have created the base tool itself. As you see, the length of the insert is quite okay. I can hover with above, above it, of course. So it looks a little bit more similar to that. But one more thing is missing, still missing. And that's gonna be the last upper part in here. For this, I would like to create it or define it by using the shank up here. So when I go to shank, I can click on define shank. What is the shank diameter? The shank diameter in my case is supposed to be this diameter here, 70 millimeters. So when I go down and change it to 70, we're done for that. The next thing is the shank length and the shank length is going from this edge till that face in this vector. So the shank length is now 35 millimeters. Simply add it. And the last one is the shank taper length. And the taper length is supposed to be from this edge till this edge in this vector. There we go, it's 50 millimeters. So simply type in the 15 and we are good to go. So now we have to find the parametric of the tool. The only thing that I don't like so far is the so-called Z offset. As you see, the shank is going uh, to the tip of the tool holder and yet it's supposed to be a little bit more different, of course. How can we do that? But simply by using the Z offset. But what is the value for that? Let me figure it out first from this face till that face and we see it's 21 millimeters. So actually it's quite easy. Simply type in 21 millimeters and we're good. Now we have to find the parametric of the tool simply by creating a tool that looks like the very tool that we want to add. So anyways, now as I have defined the parametric, I would like to add the 3D components as well to my yeah, assembly uh, tool. I can do it by going to library, give it a library reference for, for instance, once more Christmas mill. And I also would like to export tool part files. So activate the check mark in here. Now we have some more settings to set. For instance, what is the specify mounting? And the mounting, just like before, has to be on the very top of the tool. But this time we have to pay attention that the x-axis is facing towards the spindle, or better said, into the milling spindle later on. And one more thing, I have also to specify the tool tip. And the tool tip is on the very tip of it, this tool. If this coordinate system is not correctly set for you guys, you simply can go into the coordinate system dialog, go to specify orientation, point dialog, and in here you can add or uh, select between two points. The first point will be the end of this radius and the second point will be the end of the radius of the opposite insert, just like that. And between those two points, it's creating a middle point for us. So click on OK. Once more, pay attention that the x-axis is facing into this bundle and click on OK. So now we have defined the mounting and the tooltip. The last thing that I'd like to add is the cutting portion of the tool. So what geometry is a cutting geometry? And in my case, all those inserts. So therefore I will simply add them and click on export to tool library. In this dialog it asks me 
What kind of tool is it though? Is it an end mill with a non-indexable um, milling or cutting geometries or is it indexable? In my case, of course, it's indexable. So therefore I'm selecting it and say, okay. The next thing is, what is the holding system? And you see the range of the holder systems, uh, systems that are yeah, existing in the default and X installation. I will simply cl uh, click the taper 60 for in my case and click on okay. So now this dialog tells me that this tool was created for the database. When I click on okay now, and click on OK once more. I can open up any other camp part that I have in mind for us. I will simply open up the other one. In my case, it's a Merry Christmas plague. Good, how can I use this new created tool now? It's quite simple actually. Go to Create Tool, and instead of selecting a tool subtitle or whatever, we go to Retrieve Tools from Library. In here, I can specify either the milling, drilling, turning tool and so on. And I will select the milling, click on OK. I can now search for a library reference or diameter, shank diameter, etc. I will simply search for a diameter 103. When I click on OK, I get all my milling tools with the diameter of 103 millimeters. So I'm selecting this tool that we just have created and say OK. And this tool now, of course, can be used in my cam operation. In my case, it's a floor wall operation. And when I generate it, we see all the tool paths appearing. So I can also, of course, set the tool on any point of the path. And I also can change the view or the better set the display for that tool. Either it's the tool itself or I can show the tool assembly that we all have added now. Or I can also make a double click on the tool. And now I can even show both of them, the tool and the assembly. So when I select it, I see that the assembly and the parametric with that we just have created are onto into each other. So very well. That was the default and X approach in creating a 3D assembly and the parametrics. Now I will show you the exciting innovations in our technology manager. We simply call it Tool Creator or TCR. The idea is to derive the tool's parametric according to its 3D data. Let me show you how we do that. So the approach or the scenario for us is going to be quite the same. But I will simply hide the tool holder so we can focus on the milling part itself. Well, in the technology manager, I will simply go to base tools, face mill, and click on the red plus icon that says create new item. After selecting the face mill uh, classification for that, I see the preview of a very new tool that I'm about to create. I can also give it a description. I will call it once more Christmas, like so. And before I start changing any other parametric down here i will simply go to the graphics tab on the left side and click on the import 3d model and create a parametric model of that when i do so the system jumps automatically into an x and asks me to give it some input for instance what are the non-cutting bodies it's gonna be this part in here where is the mount junction for that just like before, it's going to be up here. And we also have to pay attention that the X axis is pointing into the spindle itself. The next thing is it wants to know what are the cutting bodies. And I will simply pick all my inserts or I can make it like so. And one last thing is the tip junction for that. Once more, I'm going to my coordinate system dialog. And within here, I can say I want to create a point between two points, just like before. That will be the first point. And on the opposite side, this one is going to be the second point. Click on OK. Make the x-axis go into the spindle. Once more, OK. And we're actually done. So when I click on OK now, the technology manager 
with the help of the tool creator is now creating the parametrics on its own without the need for me to interfere or change something or measure something on the tool itself. You will see that the automatics behind it are working very fast and we also get all the parametrics that are necessary and it's already done. As you see, we now have in front of us once the, par once the parametrics, for instance the diameters, also the corner radius, stuff like that. And we also see that the 3D model got imported as well. So now I have the possibility even change some values if they don't fit with me. For instance, what about the flute length? For now it sets to 15.91 millimeters, but I also have the possibility to change this value down to, for instance, let's say 14 millimeters. When I hit the enter key on my keyboard, I also will see that the parametrics got changed so that the flute length is now going down to 40 millimeter instead of 15 something. And if it, this still does not fit me, I also have the possibility to click on this hand icon in here. And when I do so, I can click somewhere on the edge and everything else that's going upward from this point on will be created automatically in a non-cutting manner. So that's actually it for me now. I will click on accept. I will double check if it has already a description. Yes, it does. So therefore I will click on next. And the tool holder is now within my database without the need for me to create the parametrics on my own. I will simply create a new assembly for us. So go to assemblies, red, icon, red plus icon that says create new item. It's gonna be a milling drilling assembly. I will pick the tool holder. I already have imported the tool holder and its name is CCS in my case. There it is, I will click on okay. And I will also add the face mill, face mill itself now. So therefore another click on the plus and I will search for X underscore mess. That was the name of it. There it is, click on okay. And now we have also the possibility of course to add the tool number and the description. One final time, uh, XMAS mill. And we see the preview of it. When I click on next, we also will see how the tool is being created within the next automatically. That's it. The tool now is created within the technology manager and can be used as a 3D model and parametric tool within an X. Simply by clicking on this black arrow in here, it will be sent to our session now. And when I make another double click onto it within an X, I can cl take a closer look on the tool itself. And what else we can see? We can see that the 3D assembly is being used in here. And I also can click on tool only, so I see the parametrics only, or make the tool assembly only, or both of them once more. Very good. Once more, that's it for today. If you'd like to know more about other functions in Technology Manager, simply click on the link in the description below to see all the features and functions that are available. You can also click on one of those points to see a little introduction video for the function. So let's say I'm curious what's about the 2D and 3D view, simply click onto it and you will get a video of what is meant by that. All right, for now, we'd like to say a big thank you all to all of you out there for watching and sharing our videos here on YouTube. Stay tuned next year to not miss our new and upcoming videos. Have a good one, stay healthy and see you next time. Bye bye.